Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be delving into the Deathwing Assault box recently released by GW and specifically Belial because why not start with the Grandmaster of the Deathwing Company, arguably the most recognisable and coolest first company of all the chapters. I really like the new sculpts that GW have produced and the Deathwing Knight and Belial really tickle my pickle. I think the new hulking presence that Belial has in this sculpt really suits the model and is very fitting for the Grandmaster of the Deathwing. So let's have a look at how I painted this guy and hopefully you guys think I did him justice. So for this model, I'm going to prime it black and I'm also going to be painting it as a sub-assembly. The reason I do a sub-assembly is because I feel that there's a lot of hard to reach areas and I really want to make sure I get everything. Now I know a lot of people say that, you know, if you don't really see those areas, why bother? Personally, I just feel if someone's going to pick up the model and have a look at it, I don't want them to have a look all around and then see a place that I've missed. And, you know, it kind of just ruins the whole sort of finish of the model, in my opinion. And not only that, it's always a good excuse to actually paint. And the more you paint, the better you get. So that's just my two penny worth. So I've painted Deathwing Terminators before, including the new ones uh, that came in the Leviathan box set last year, but I wanted to change the paint recipe because I felt the ones I did before, even though I was happy with them, I felt that I wanted to tone it down a bit and not have them as warm, because this is grim dark after all. So with the model primed, I now proceed to base coat the entire model in a dark brown, specifically grim brown, as this will provide the sort of shadow colour for the entirety of the armour. This is then followed by a rich tan colour. I'm using British Uniform as this will add the much needed warmth to contrast against that dark brown shadow base coat we put on previously. Now I'm basically applying all this through the airbrush because I'm doing effectively a zenithal highlight. So I'm establishing these volumes without running a contrast paint over the top. Right, now it's time to start building up those volumetric highlights from that tan colour. I proceeded to go with a torp sort of colour for this to start bringing out that bone sort of element and for this I use reddish grey and now for that final highlight I'm going to be using a beige grey and I found rock grey a really good colour for this. Now with all those light volumes established it's time to knock it back a little bit and tie it all together. I'm going to do this by using streaking grime by AK Interactive but quick note before you apply the streaking grime you want to varnish your model and you want to do this for two reasons. Firstly, the streaking grime will tint the paint underneath quite heavily if you don't varnish it. And secondly, when it comes to removing the streaking grime, it can potentially damage the paint underneath. Now with the streaking grime now dry, we can start removing it with some white spirit. And as you can see, it's created a darker look. So once the streaking grime has been removed, you want to let it dry for a bit because obviously the white spirit will still be on the model for a while and you don't want to be trying to paint on top of that. But once it is dry, you now want to start edge highlighting all the areas that you feel are going to catch the light. So namely the strong edges that are facing upwards. Now I'm going to go back to Rock Grey by Egg Interactive for this. So now we're onto the tabard and the hood. For this fabric, I wanted it to be quite a saturated yellowy green. I effectively mix the colors between each step to help them transition into each other better. So I base coat king purple, followed by king purple mixed with black green, and then pure black green, and then obviously black green mixed with grass green, and then pure grass green as the final highlight. Okay, so now onto the big cape. Now I wanted the cape to stand out against the tabard, but I didn't want it to be directly contrasting. So instead I just went for a different tone of green. Now I used the same technique as before, but this time I used black, black green, and interior light green. Again, all by Ake Interactive. However, for the final step, I used a heavily watered down Dark Angels contrast paint to tie the colors together. For the underside of the cape, I basically did a zenithal highlight with a dry brush followed by a coat of Sigvold Burgundy contrast paint to bring out the light volumes I'd established through dry brushing. I then build up the highlights once more using Screamer Pink and then add Rock Grey to it in increasing increments until I'm happy with the final highlight colour. Like the top of the cape, I use a wash to tie this all together and I do this with Caribou Crimson. I decided to go for red for the bolter casing and the sword and dagger sheaths on the model. I build up the colour using black, burnt red, blood red and light rust. 
Like the cape as mentioned previously, you want to mix the lighter colour with the previous mix to build up that gradient. I again use watered down caribou crimson to tie it all together. Now I'm going to start tackling the metallics on the model. I'm going to start with the gold details. Specifically, you'll see these on the shoulder pauldrons and little details like his necklace and his sword, etc. And the little skull on his bolter as well. Now before I paint anything gold, especially if I'm using metallic paints, I like to base coat it in a dark brown because this is a really good base for the gold to work from. I proceed to mix dark brown with bronze in a one-to-one -one ratio and then apply it to most areas mentioned previously. I build on this by using pure bronze and then a final highlight of gold mixed with bright silver in a one to three ratio to really sell that highlight. And again, all the paints are egg interactive. Now onto the steel or silver element of the model. This is more straightforward than the gold. I base coat it in black and I go for a darker steel colour like Iron Warriors which is by Games Workshop and I then follow that up with a highlight of natural steel which is a very bright silver and to tie it all together I use a fan favourite non-oil. Okay, so now onto the leather details. I used a dark brown, specifically Grim Brown by Ake Interactive as the base colour and then started adding reddish grey, again from Ake Interactive, to the mix and started making those scratchy marks to provide a worn look to the leather. I proceeded to add more reddish grey and continued with making these marks until I was happy with how it looked. I then gave it a quick wash with some watered down snake bite leather contrast paint to finish it off. Okay, so now we're looking at the insignias on the model. Now he's got one on his shoulder pad, he's got one on his back, and he's also got one on his sword sheath. So I'm going to be building up from grey to white. I use German grey, ash grey and white from Ake Interactive and like the cape and the sheath details from earlier I built up the colours gradually to produce a gradient and when you look at the sword on the insignias I use the same recipe as the bolt gun and the red leather sheaths. Now as you can probably tell on the cape there's a little bit of rope that connects the two sides and it runs underneath that sort of front shield that he has. So for this I used black, purple and rock grey I first mix black and purple at about one to one and from there I go up to purple and then I add rock grey to the mix to the point where it's the colour I want for the final highlight. Now the sword that Belial wields is the Sword of Silence. If you're aware of the lore, it's one of the Heavenfall blades and it's described as pretty much being black. So to achieve this I used black, dark blue, grey blue and white from Make Interactive. So this is pretty much a non-metallic metal effect and to produce this I effectively establish light volumes with the top half contrasting against the bottom half in terms of their placement. Once you have your light volumes established you want to glaze these colours into each other to produce a smooth transition. Now it's going to look quite messy until it kind of makes sense. It's quite hard to describe how it works but trust me that's what happens. Once you're happy with how the blending's taken shape you then edge highlight the sword with pure white. So as you can probably tell, there's a few gems dotted around the model. Now, instead of going through the colors I used, I'll just go through the technique so you guys can use whatever color you like. So here's my handy 2D gem. Spill it like it's hot. So here it is. What you want to do is prime the entire gem, a sort of dark base color. So if you're gonna paint it red, I'd do it like black or a very dark red, so it's borderline black, green or blue. You know, same thing applies. Now if we want the light to be reflecting here, what we want to do is start from about here, bringing in a more saturated colour. So for example, if you're going to do red, instead of it being a black red, just a standard dark red will do. And then working from there, you want to go lower down, lighter still, and then again, just going with red as an option here. When we come down to this section, you want to start going into orange there and then for that very final section I'd add a bit of yellow to an orange and then just have that on there and it should as long as you thin your paints properly it should kind of blend into one thing and now you've got all this negative space here from the original base coat what we want to do is add a dot of white on there to make it look like it's a light bouncing off of it so you can either do just like a circle like that on there or you can even add another little one depending on how adventurous you want to be or instead of a circle you can actually add that in white okay so now we're on the home stretch of Belial 
himself. Now we're moving on to Belial's face. Now the hood should already be completed because we did that in the tabard stage of the model, but for the face itself we're going to base coat it in a dark red. And I like base coating in a dark red because it is a nice warm colour to build upon with flesh tones. So I used burnt red, tan earth and dark flesh for this process. I go lighter by using tan earth. I establish again all the volumes on the face with those recesses remaining dark red. From there I start adding dark flesh into the mix which is a more yellowy sort of flesh tone to the tan earth and I keep working higher with the highlights. Eventually I'll just use pure dark flesh for those final highlights. Now I didn't paint the eyes of Blyle's face purely and simply because his hood comes so far over his face. I attempted to do the eyes and personally I was just like it doesn't really look that great. They stood out quite a lot so instead I just decided to leave that in shadow and again I think that's really effective. With the face now done, Belial is good to go. However, we've still got his impaled skeleton buddy to work on. As you can see, I've used some cork to base Belial. But I won't go into detail here about it as I'm sure you guys have your own ideas how you want him based. For the skeleton, I used the same colours as I did for Belial's armour, but I didn't use any streaking grime. Just focus on building up those highlights and textures so it all looks consistent. Now for the purity seal, I went with German Grey, Ash Grey and White by Ake Interactive but I didn't want the paper to look too similar to the bone colour on the skeleton as it would have gotten lost and it wouldn't have stood out as a separate entity. I built up the colours like I did on the bolt gun strap to add some texture to it. Now for the fire details on the base of the model. I'm again going to use the same recipe as the bolt gun and red leather details except this time I'm going to add some white ink to the very bottom of the flames and you'll see why in a second. Right, time to build on those fire elements. I do this by airbrushing Imperial Fist contrast paint onto the areas I added white to earlier. This really helps the yellow pop and stand out providing that much needed warmth. Now to add the OSL, which is object source lighting if you don't know. I use a Interactive New Fire Orange ink through the airbrush and hit the skeleton from below so it gives the impression that the orange light has been cast onto it. Now this is the first time I'm using this ink and I have to say I'm really happy with it as it really produced the effect I was going for. What do you guys think? Right, so that's Belial finished. And I have to say, he was great fun to paint and put together. And if you guys weren't able to get your hands on the Deathwing Assault box, because I know that the pre-orders sold out quite quickly, um, I was very lucky that I managed to get one randomly. But when Belial comes out as a standalone model, I highly recommend you guys get him and give him a go. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you think that I did Belial justice. Don't forget, if you've got any questions or feedback, please put them in the comments below and we'll have a chat about it as I'd love to hear what you guys think. So if you enjoyed my video and would like to support my channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'd also like to say the opportunity to say a huge thank you to the people that have subscribed over the last few weeks. It really means a lot. I really wasn't expecting it. Um, yeah, thanks guys, you're great. See you soon.